I already like the aesthetic of this game. That's yeah, for sure. it's sci-fi. Ooh. Yeah, it's a sci-fi murder m mystery, but with kind of religious overtones, but not. This the... I'm getting Illuminati Art Deco yes. futurism. Yeah, the uh, the artist that specifically I guess spearheaded this whole game mm -hmm. is uh, I I'm not gonna say I'm playing favorites, but he's one of my favorite game artists. He started with the Shattered Planet art style or shattered planets sorry i named a whole DD campaign in honor of that game hmm. just because i thought it was such a uh a neat title uh but his artwork has always been really neat since he was in charge of this one but effectively it is a murder mystery game where somebody is being taken over by a a hacker effectively and made to do evil things oh. and we have to figure out who it is you got to turn the controller on by the way oh very well I shall. So instead of having a spectral possession by a ghost, you're having a hacker instead. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of set in the in kind of a, a more idyllic looking cyberpunk future, which is kind of cool. You, know, you want to navigate idyllic, to new game? Idyllic? Don't you mean idyllic? Uh, it's kind of what I said. I. Oh, are you gonna have to play this keyboard and mouse? I might have to. Oh. Okay, well. Wait, oh, wait. The two brothers, your case. What is this? Ooh. A hundred years without murder. A hundred years without demonic possession. Then, this. I am Sister Ada, exorcist and investigator. This is my testament to the massacre at St. Wallapurga's Abbey. It is truth. Do not believe the lies of my accusers. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, they're saying here, a hundred years without murder and demonic possession. What? I I guess so. All right. So you're in charge. Take us away, and I'll grab you your chocolate if you want. I don't need any more chocolate. Okay. Let's continue. Saint Walpurga's Abbey Cybernetics Sister Workshop. Ada, welcome. Ooh. Oh, it is voice acted. But it is so. I'm going to have to turn it up, though. We have Virgil and we have Ada. I'm going to have to turn this up a bunch. Well, I'm definitely hearing the ambience now. Yeah, we might have to turn the music down. This might take a little bit. Anyway. Yeah, so already I'm seeing here they have elaborate facial markings and yep. whatnot. Because I think everybody has cybernetics. I'm sure there's gene modding, obviously, based on the name of this location. But I mean, this is an abbey, so interesting. But they said it was a workshop, but the interesting thing is I'm seeing what looks to be human components on those two mannequin stands. I don't know if those are supposed to be... Yeah. Okay. In any case, he's welcoming Sister Ada. I am Virgil, Chief Inquisitor at St. Walpurgis Abbey. We may be in need of your talents as an exorcist. You can survey the evidence yourself, but I think you will agree. Has there truly been a murder? It seems so. A respected priestess, Mother Miriam, passed this morning under suspicious circumstances. A demon may be present. Here, even now, possessing someone. What happened, exactly? Mother Miriam was only recently appointed as successor to Abbot Gregory. This morning, she came to the workshop to receive her coronet of office. Something went wrong with the installation. Installation? The coronet of office isn't a physical object, it's something that has to be installed? Yeah. Unless it's like a removable component from their heads or something, but... Could be. So someone didn't like the... I, I, I suppose whomever was to take over the role as head of the Abbey. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes. To put it mildly, the coronet oversurged, killing Mother Miriam. Brace yourself for the sight. Who is her head going to be fried? Then the workshop operators, Gideon and Reuben, are the prime suspects. They are brothers, right? Yes, but it's highly out of character for Gideon or Reuben to kill someone. 
Even so, they were the only ones present when Mother Miriam died. Daemons nurture our sinful desires into unthinkable actions, Virgil. One of the brothers has surely been seduced by a daemon. Ooh, interesting. But they said that... Now, he said demon, but she's saying daemon. Yeah. But they haven't murdered for a hundred years, mm -hmm. they said? That's interesting. Whichever it is, I will unmask his lies and cast out the daemon within him. May Einsoff's will be done. Amen. To so exercise daemon. a daemon, we must uncover four things. What were you saying? Oh, daemons are computer programs, in this case. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, like, actual demon demons. But, I don't know, it's it's kind of a maybe, fun maybe parallel. Maybe it's a, an interesting name for a virus or yeah, something else. exactly. Something I, that corrupts. I, I like the combination here. Normally I'm not big on, I, I guess, heavily religious tones, because it usually is just kind of boring. You're sitting in a church. Most of the people are superstitious. But if you integrate technology into that superstition, suddenly you're going kind of Warhammer with it. And I like that, but I'm liking this a little bit better because it's a lot less grungy. <laughs> okay. So to exercise it, must uncover four things. What are those four things? First, the suspect. We must identify which sinner is possessed by a daemon. Second, the opportunity. When exactly was the murder committed? We can pinpoint the opportunity by analyzing each suspect's testimonies. Third, the means by which the murder has been committed. The means can be found among the physical evidence at the scene of the incident. Fourth, the motive of the murderer, which can be found in their inner world, their sanctum. Their inner world? So it's not like you're even questioning them, it's you enter a world or a room or something that comprises their thoughts and their memories, perhaps? Yeah. And you use that as a clue as opposed to asking them? Hmm. The motive will tell us which Daven possesses the sinner. Wait, the motive will tell us which daemon possesses the sinner. Are there specific daemons? Would it be, say, the seven deadly sins? Like, was it greed? Was it jealousy? Was yeah. it... Yeah, it's kind of their motivation. We'll have to see if they actually follow that. Very well. Let us begin our holy work. Okay. Now, what's this? Don't tell me that I can go forward and back in time. Yes, you can. You're putting together the, the timeline of the crime. Oh, I see. So we're going to be putting it together here. It's not like this is actually going in real time, right? Yeah. So you will you will be observing people's behaviors. So I believe. This is who we were just speaking with. Yep. Virgil. These are the two brothers. And then let me see if I can navigate this. Oh, I see. I can move her by clicking. So we have their workshop. This is very messy. Whereas this is very neat. I wonder if the this- The two brothers. It's the two brothers. Yeah. They're two different styles. And then Miriam looks like, yeah, that might be over there. So we have here, Miriam, newly appointed voice of Ain Sof, who was scheduled to receive an Aether Coronet implant at the workshop. So she's the victim. And it looks like she doesn't have a head anymore. Let's just put it that oh, way. Oh, gross. So interesting. They actually had her sealed behind this. What yeah. What is this? They probably use the organ. Like, that room is the cybernetics operating the organ. room. Yeah. And it's also just an organ. I'm going to look at the door button. Sure. Oh. The door controls a valuable piece of physical evidence. A new entry is now added on your evidence panel, which can be found in the lower left left of your display. There. You can access detailed information about the door controls. You must present them when, to suspects in order to discover any con contradictions. 
This is like weird Phoenix Wright all of a sudden. I like it. Okay, the door controls. Used to open and close the consecration chamber. Only operable from the outside of the chamber. Usage records show that it was opened twice this morning. Interesting. Shouldn't it have only been opened... Well, no, 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 it's open now. So it opened once to let Miriam in. And then has it opened again? Because Well, I don't... it's open now, so... Well, I don't see any blood all along the floor over here. You would think that it would have splattered outside the door if it had been open when this happened. Do you know what I mean? Yep, I know exactly what you mean. All right, are we back? Yep. All right, so we have that. Let us look at the victim. But don't step in her blood, please. Ah, uh, a new piece of evidence. Let's examine it now. So we have Mother Miriam's body and the coronet remains. Mother Miriam's body, look, they even made a version of it in just plain white and black, oh gosh. The body is completely unharmed, but her head has exploded into a mess of blood and bone fragments. And the other one would be the coronet remains. Yeah, it does look like it does look like a crown, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Found near Mother Miriam's body, part of the amplifier component had bits and bits of the casing have survived the explosion. Interesting. So we already got that bit. Looks like there's nothing else that we can look at on the interior of the chain. Can, you, oh. press, hmm? can you press alt for a second? Alt sure. or like shift? See if things light up. Sometimes hmm. with these games, maybe no. tab? I think we nah. have to manually scroll okay. over Okay, I mean, luckily they've got the glow to them, so it's not so bad. I just know there's a number of these games where you can press like a button and it'll highlight everything that can be interacted with. Evidence found, control panel. Used to activate and control the consecration chamber, usage records show that the aether output during the ceremony was well beyond safe ranges. So, it really was an overload, but it was definitely someone who was at this control panel, or did someone mess with the control panel? Sorry I'm not talking to the brothers first. I like to gather evidence no, and then talk. Well, especially because then you can use the evidence in the conversation with them as opposed to returning. Now, here is a coronet limiter. Was it removed? Found in Gideon's workplace in pristine condition, component is required to safely install the coronet without causing an aether oversurge. Well, so that is it just seems forgotten? necessary. Gideon's workstation. The consecration ceremony. One, place the coronet and the recipient into the chamber. Two, the performer and the recipient pray in silence. Three, begin the song to start modulating the aether. Four, intensify the aether output by bringing the performance to a crescendo. So, it is true that here there's no mention of this coronet limiter. It just says place the coronet in yeah. the chamber. So it could be the instructions, but I don't know. Or maybe that's just supposed to be part of the coronet. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at the other side. There's the computers in the back there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think almost everything that can be interacted with has the glow. Or the, the sheen. Ooh. The coronet blueprints. Plans for constructing the aether coronet. The purpose of the device seems to amplify the user's aether output. The components are amplifier, casing, and limiter. Yeah. So the limiter... Wait, didn't we say... Didn't we have here that parts of the amplifier component and the casing have survived. Yeah, so there was no limiter. So there was no limiter at all. Found on Ruben's workstation. Yeah, spear blueprints. Plans for restoring a relic that was recently brought to St. Walpurga's by Father Augustine. Is it like the Spear of Longinus or something? I don't know how tied this is to you. I, whenever you pronounce it that way, Whenever that is pronounced in any way, to be honest. Oh, for goodness sake. It just is uncomfortable. Oh, there was an herb here? What's this? 
The devil's herb. I knew something nefarious is afoot. The abbey must be purified of its scent. I should dispose of any that I find. So, someone was taking drugs? The ganja. Yep. Or maybe something else. Alright, I don't see anything else glistening. Alright, so do we talk with the brothers then? So the Gideon is the younger. Reuben is the older brother. So what we found here is that he had the herb. The other guy had the limiter. Correct. Both of them had blueprints and instructions regarding how to conduct the ceremony. But it did not go to plan. Correct. Because someone forgot the limiter. Let's talk with the elder brother. An exorcist? Surely there are no demons here, though. This was an accident, wasn't it? Already he's implying it's an accident. Hmm. If Gideon is possessed, that would mean he did it on purpose. Horrible. You must be the elder brother. Yes, my name is Ruben Garamond. I am responsible for the engineering and design of our implants. How did Mother Miriam die, exactly? It was a completely preventable accident. He's still asserting that's an accident. Mother Miriam died because Gideon deliberately flouted the ceremonial guidelines for his own glory. Flouted the guidelines? Yeah, ignored them. Ah. Uh. Gideon may be my flesh and blood, but he must take responsibility for his negligence. Sister Ada, hear Reuben's testimony and judge for yourself whether he speaks truth or lies. Yeah, flouted. Openly disregard a rule, law, or convention. The testimony of a suspect is divided into events. Really? Because I always thought that flouted was to show off. You're thinking flaunted. Flaunted! Yeah, they're uh, very similar. That they are. You can access detailed descriptions of events by hovering over them. You can manipulate the timeline marker to navigate to any moment in the testimony. Let's listen to what Reuben has to say. Mother Miriam came to us to receive a consecration ceremony, but she wanted something extravagant. Gideon suggested setting the coronet to have maximum ether output. I warned him that doing so is highly dangerous. Wait, she wanted it to be elaborate? Gideon convinced her to move forward with the ceremony anyway, since he was going to handle everything. I went back to my tasks. Hmm, what part of this testimony is rather long and repetitive? Let's move ahead to the next section. Try to stop the ceremony. Wait, really? But I wanted to see... All of this. We'll oh. see it from Gideon's when perspective. When Gideon activated the consecration chamber, I immediately felt something was wrong. I bet Gideon to stop, but he didn't listen. No. Well then, uh, heard enough. Let's leave him for now. So then the last bit is just Miriam dies. Yep. All right, leave. Okay, so we have his testimony. And talk he's to the just, other one. Yeah. Am I supposed to be? We'll just have to talk with Gideon. This madness! Uh, I will not suffer this injustice. Wow. Well, well, well then. I am Gideon the Grand, the greatest cybernetician of our generation. I already dislike him. Me he, too. He, I mean, I could definitely believe his brother in saying that he flouted uh, safety pr protocols and precautions. Hmm. So he took off the limiter. It's not that the other brother forgot to add it. This guy probably removed it. Well, right, because they are claiming that Miriam wanted... She wanted something special? She wanted more yeah. of her aether to so flow? So by removing the limiter more ether, I guess. Mm-hmm. I am blessed. 
I don't know what went wrong this morning. My hands are guided by the divine. Oh, oh, oh. Really? If you say that much, how do we know what you're being guided by? For goodness sake. I see only gaudy trinkets here. Mother Miriam died by your hands. Is that not so? No, I would never harm her. Besides, why would I? She was my patron. In her kindness and generosity, she truly was like a mother to me, and I her son. I did nothing wrong. The consecration chamber must have been compromised. Really now? Let us hear what Gideon has to say. Keep in mind that Gideon's testimony may differ greatly from Reuben's version of events. If an event is corroborated by another suspect's testimony, it'll be marked as verified on the timeline. Let's listen to what Gideon has to say. Let us go. Mother Miriam came to me for her consecration ceremony. I've performed this many times before, so I was confident. So you can scrub if you want to go a little faster or click on one of the events. I don't have auto pause or I see. Can I pause? To prepare for the ceremony, I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber. That's not the same. Meanwhile, I adjusted the coronet's amplitude. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wait a second, you're supposed to put that thing yep. on her before, and also, he didn't guide her to the chamber. Wait a second. Let's re-examine what he said about Miriam's arrival. Drag the marker to change the time. To prepare for the ceremony, I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber. Ah, interesting. Mother Miriam came to me for her consecration ceremony. I've performed this many times before, so... To prepare for the ceremony, I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber. So I think you chamber. have to rewatch the entire Miriam's arrival. Mother Miriam this whole thing? Yeah. Interesting. Gideon does not mention Reuben being present while greeting Mother Miriam. Let's select Miriam's arrival and ask Gideon about it. So, Miriam's arrival? Yep. Mother Miriam came to me for her consecration ceremony. I've performed. Okay. Good. I should remember that I can ask my suspect about any statement in a testimony. Were you alone when greeting Mother Miriam? Hmm, yes. I'm certain I was alone then. He insists that he was alone. I wonder if Reuben will corroborate this. For now, let's finish hearing the rest of his testimony. Okay, so... To prepare for the ceremony, I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber. Let's ask him about that. Why have Reuben do this? Why not open the chamber yourself? I did not want Mother Miriam to wait too long. Besides, menial work is all Reuben's good for anyway. Ooh, ouch. Okay, let's talk about the coronet Meanwhile, then. I adjusted the coronet's amplification at my work table, and then placed it on Mother Miriam's head. Oh, do we still have to keep listening to it? Or we can ask. There we go. What exactly did you modify? I bet he took the limiter off then and yeah, then. Yeah, he did. I modified the amplifier with, within to its maximum setting. To do so, I had to temporarily remove the limiter. Temporarily remove? More like permanently. It never got on her head. But I made sure to replace it before taking it to the chamber. Uh, no. Can I accuse? Contradict? Would contradict, but I think we're not. We're not I, far enough along. You're jumping the gun. I know. Sorry. You might as well click on the next segment. Sure, sure, sure. We began by closing our eyes and praying together to Einsoft. I thought I heard the chamber open, but didn't think much of it. Wait, what? During the prayer? Yeah. Really? Here, just hit play to see what happens. Oh. 
Because what he is ac accusing his brother of is what? Taking something off of her? That's awfully suspicious. Also, that can't be possible. The door was only opened and closed twice. Correct. Then I activated the consecration chamber and began the ceremony itself. The aether output was within safe ranges. Whereas the brother said it was already overloading. Oh, but look, his brother is interjecting. I've heard enough. Let's leave him for now. Really? I want to ask about this. Then I activated the con what makes you so certain that the ceremony was safe? Because I've performed this many times. Yeah, but not with the limiter removed. Though he probably doesn't remember putting the limiter away. Just uh, click on the, uh, just click above. It happened. Oh, you didn't Mother finish Miriam asking him killed. about it, Shell. Oh, what? Go back uh, to perform, go ask. Yes? So just click above, like above the timeline. So click. Yes. Because you... Above the timeline. Yes. Just click. No. Oh, move over a bit. Okay. Oh, I see. It's telling you to go to leave. That's what it was. Yeah. That's I what it wants it was to me continue. to do. I just wanted to ask more about this. This is a nightmare. Mother Miriam, please forgive me. I wanted to ask him about the ceremony. Oh, but he just goes back to the, the ceremony was safe, etc. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think we've already found a number of contradictions. Now that we've heard testimony from each suspect, let's think carefully. There is only one truth to that chain of events this morning, and I doubt that either brother has told it to us. So we must rely on Ain Soth's greatest gifts to us, our minds. There are three ways that we should consider what we've discovered. First way is deduction. Since there can only be one truth if two things do not align, one or both of them are false. If Gideon and Reuben do not agree on something, someone is lying. Or, if what they say does not match the evidence I find, then they must be lying. Second is induction. I should base my theory based on what I discover. If my theory does not align with any of the testimonies or evidence that I find, then I should discard it. If two theories are both possible, then I should prefer one that has more information that supports it. That said, induction alone is usually not enough. Finally, abduction. I must hypothesize what could have happened, filling gaps in information with my imagination. This is the fastest and most powerful way of thinking, but also the most fraught. I should engage in each of these three ways in order to uncover the truth. So one thing, you never actually asked him about prayer. Oh, can you hover over it for a second? Hover over him? No, 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 no. This? Over, yeah. Corroboration, no. Specificity, yes. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so corroboration, specificity. Yeah, so here, Ruben was saying, Gideon suggested setting the corner to have maximum aether output, and I warned him that doing this is highly dangerous. But he did adjust the cornet. Meanwhile, I adjusted the cornet amplification at my work table and then placed it on Mother Miriam's head. So interesting. Let's ask about Miriam's arrival. Well, I, I, I do. We still need to ask Gideon about the prayer, though. Yeah. Mother Miriam came to us to receive a consecration ceremony, but she wanted something extravagant. You and Gideon greeted Mother Miriam together? That's right. Mother Miriam's our patron, so I insisted on being present. Okay. So, Mother Miriam came to me for a consecration ceremony. Does that corroborate with what had happened here? Or did he say that uh, oh, he was alone? You can. Uh, you might be able to ask about what they were doing. Gideon so suggested setting the coronet to have maximum ether output. I warned Gideon didn't mention me being there. 
Typical. Okay. Instead of hitting enter, she'll just click on the dialogue boxes. All right, all right. I just know that I, for other games, it's nice just to be able to click, but in this one, it doesn't function as well. So yeah, he didn't even mention yep. his being there. They didn't heed your warning? Why not? Gideon believes that his so-called genius makes him impervious to danger. An ordinary man might fail, but not Gideon the Grand. As for Mother Miriam, she only has ears for Gideon. Today was no different. Well, I, I wouldn't doubt any of that. Let's go here. Curious, Ribbon claims that he went back to his workstation. What does Gideon say? Let's switch to his testimony. To prepare for the... Oh, interesting. He ordered Mother Miriam to take to the consecration chamber. Oh, yeah. Gideon claims that Reuben opened the door to the consecration chamber. Let's go back to Reuben. Gideon convinced her to move forward with the ceremony anyway, since he was going to handle everything. I went back to my tasks. So he can contradict, mm -hmm. apparently. And then we have to press the order Reuben. Present. Lies unmasked. But is it a really a lie? Huh. Ribbon Garamond, you did not return to your workstation after the discussion. Gideon ordered you to open the consecration chamber for Mother Miriam. Ordered me? Is that what he told you? Despite his delusions, Gideon certainly not my master. I did open the chamber, it's true. I apologize for the omission. It's a regular part of our routine that slipped my mind earlier. Reuben has amended his testimony. Let's examine the open chamber. Good. His statement from Reuben's testimony is now verified for two reasons. One, corroboration. Gideon's testimony confirms that Reuben opened the door for Mother Miriam. Two, specificity. It was a shorter time frame and describes a clear set of events. I can assume that any verified statement like this is true. What's more, the contradiction weakened the suspect's resolve. His eye of providence glows, which allows me to enter his sanctum, the digital representation of his mind. Oh, that's what their little eyes are on the top of their heads. <laughs> Let us see his third eye to enter his sanctum and see what truly motivates this suspect. So click on his head. There we go. I love this UI work. Mm hmm. Evidence discovered. He is a believer. Whatever that means. Let's take a look. We only cracked the outer layer of his sanctum this time. Still, let's examine the psychological evidence that we found. You know what this reminds me of? Hmm? It reminds me of that Yu-Gi-Oh arc where, you know how Yami Yugi has insane powers with his, mm. um, well, I mean, pretty much all of those ancient Egyptian relics did. Mm -hmm. But didn't he get to see specifically people's bedrooms? Mm. Like their mind maze bedrooms? Yeah. And or was it just his own? Or is it somebody else? Oh, oh no, no, it, I think it was Shoddy. Mm, you know, the guy with the mm -hmm. Ankh? Was he the one that could go into people's rooms? Maybe, yeah. I forget. And for some reason, Yugi's bedroom was extraordinarily childish. Yep, and then, of course, Yami Yugi was in there. Yep, yeah, yeah, Shoddy. I remember his name. Still, let's examine the psychological evidence that we found. Ooh, here, we have a little brain icon now. Interesting, this information will help me discern which statements to trust. Let's quickly examine each statement in his testimony again. So, it looks like... Excellent, some of the statements are now supported by the suspect's psychology. So, this was based on belief? Because that's what his sanctum is. Next, we must find correlations between the suspect's behavior and existing demons. 
Wait a minute. Are we going to get a list of cool daemons? No? Yeah, maybe. I want to know. Let's open the na daemonology. Ooh. So we do have Lucifer himself. Lucifer the Proud. The Prince of Daemons and the external adversary of Ain Sof manifests in the ambitious and strong-willed, promising them their heart's desire in exchange for their soul. That does not sound like this dude. Beelzebub, the gluttonous, simple-minded daemon that de debilitates the host, turning them into feral beasts. The host is compelled to consume stranger and filthier things until nothing remains of their humanity. That sounds like Goffrey, doesn't it, Wander? Have him consume slimier and filthier things. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's from another game. Yeah, that's we, he role played took a character. Me a little bit. I thought I was. I thought we were talking about Joffrey from Game of Thrones. No, I don't no. know. Back to proud though. Proud would apply to the other brother. Proud would definitely apply to apply to Gideon, but not this man. Not Reuben. In any case, ugh, Beelzebub. All right, Sothenus, or Sothenas, the Sothenes, mm, the vengeful. A furious daemon that strokes the simmering rage within the host, preys upon the fervent and the righteous, goading them to make take matters into their own hands. Might be something applicable to a believer who feels like they have to take matters into their own hands, but I don't know. Lotan, I really like the look of these things. Yeah. They're probably these weird mechanized or beasts, which will be really fascinating to see if we ever do get. Oh, when we get to exercise these guys, I bet do we so, get to yeah. see the daemon inside I hope them? So. I hope. I hope we do. Lotan the envious. Yeah. So we've already had gluttony, pride, this um, wrath, and then this one is envy, mm -hmm. from what I've seen. Yep. Lotan the envious, playful but deceitful daemon who slowly drives the host mad with whispers of their own inadequacy. The host blames others for their ill fortune until the apparent injustice drives them to take what is rightfully theirs. This could be Reuben. Could be. Oh, yeah, really? So we've only got four. We only have four that we so can So I think there might now? only be four cases in this game. Oh. Yeah. Oh, All well. right. If the suspect is possessed, there should be a psychological there should be psychological evidence that has a clear co correlation with the daemon. To obtain further psychological evidence, I must find more contradictions that present them to the sus and present them to the suspect. Now that I have heard the testimony and gathered evidence, I can accuse the suspect. But do we really want to accuse him already? I don't feel like accusing him yet, but I, it looks like they're just railroading me, aren't they? Maybe it just brings you there, but you can pull out. To accuse the suspect, I must establish the opportunity, means, and motive of the crime. I can try as many times as I wish, but there is only one true answer to each section. Let's try to establish the opportunity. Let's present a section of the suspect's testimony. Oh, so he's saying... Are you accusing me of sabotage? When could I have done any of this? I mean, it could have been when he opened the chamber. Probably not trying to stop the ceremony. It's, I mean, it's probably during the prayer segment, during his during return work. to work. Yeah. Good. If it's a valid answer, the suspect will be forced to admit that they could have committed the murder at that time. Otherwise, the suspect will give a counter-argument as to why that is impossible. If I was in the chamber then, Gideon or Mother Miriam would have seen me. What about when Gideon and Mother Miriam were praying? Ha! Huh. I was still working at that time. Do I have proof that he was, or wasn't? If I do, I should contradict him with it first before accusing him. During the ceremony, no one was inside the chamber other than Mother Miriam. If you're accusing me of sabotage, what? when could I have done any of this? Next, let's try to establish the means. 
For this, I need to present physical evidence. Gideon was the one that operated the device. How could have I affected the chamber or Mother Miriam? Well... Limiter. The limiter, but the limiter was off to the side. But it would be the limiter The blueprints, still. wasn't that on his side of the room? Yeah. I but still would... How could I have affected the chamber or Mother Miriam? No, limiter. that's true. The limiter. Found in Gideon's workspace in pristine condition, component is required to safely install. But it was on Gideon's workspace, though. He could have put it over there intentionally, though. That's no, the point. That's true. Present. Good. Same as before, the suspect will accept my evidence if it is valid. And deny it if they can explain why I'm wrong. There was nothing faulty with the coronet itself. Indeed, the craftsmanship was flawless, as was Gideon's performance of the ceremony. But you removed the limiter from the coronet without Gideon's knowledge, which, coupled with the coronet's high amplification, caused an oversurge. Gideon's arrogance may have endangered Mother Miriam. Finally, let's establish the motive. I need to present a psychological, some psychological evidence from their sanctum. Mother Miriam was our patron. Why would I want to harm her? Believer. Found in Ruben's sanctum, faithful servant of Ain Saw, or so he thinks. He knows that cybernetics are a critical part of the one truth. Good. If he is the culprit, then presented with the correct motive, the daemon within him will compel him to speak the truth. If not, he will deny my claim. Your faith is what drove you to kill Mother Miriam. Why would you think so? If anything, my faith is the proof that I would not have hurt a priestess. Mother Miriam was our patron. Why would I want to harm her? Yeah, so the, this guy is absolutely not it. We just... Mm -hmm. She's just accusing him first. As the tutorial. The accusation was unsuccessful, which means I must investigate further. Let's cancel for now and leave the suspect. I kind of wish they didn't have this tutorial as much or like it would just pop up of like how to do it as opposed to the guided thing because tutorials like this always make me not feel dumb but it's just like why would I why would I why do Why would I do this? these? Yeah. All right, and with that that's a pretty good stopping point ish. I know we're in the middle of an investigation but the investigations run a little long so I'm going to have to cut in the middle of them at some point. Anyway, this game is really cool. I like it a lot. I love the visuals. I love the music, even if it's a little unbalanced. And I love the investigative nature. It's very Phoenix Wright, but deeper feeling? I love the timeline, and I would love to play a Phoenix Wright game that had a timeline like this. Because that would really keep my thoughts in better order. Oh well. Anyway, uh, so the game is out now. It's $20 on Steam. It's a little short for that price, but... It's pretty good, so from my perspective, was super worth it. We more or less felt compelled to play through the entire thing in one night, and I do not regret that at all. Uh, so, I guess with that, if you guys like this in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe, because we're doing a full series on this one, short as it is. And we've got a whole bunch of other rad indie games uh, to check out as well. So, I guess with that, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.